Today's talk is about mass adoption in the NFT social platform. So if you've been uh, involved in the NFT or crypto space for any amount of time, you've heard the term mass adoption. But with the influx of new builders, entrepreneurs, and creators to the space, how do we achieve mass adoption? We achieve mass adoption by prioritizing user experience um, and by understanding platform uh, development. The framework for mass adoption. We'll go through the current landscape, um, how to identify a solid idea um, for platform growth. Um, we'll look at then platform growth, which, which is called escape velocity. And then we'll look at how do we build a trench around our user base um, and ward off competition, which is called uh, building the trench. The current landscape. Let's look at Web 2, Web 3, what they prioritize, and we'll look at um, NFT social platforms and what's used currently today. So when we look at Web 3, we, or Web 2, Web 2 prioritizes user experience. User experience is built in, it's caked into the, to the development since day one. When we look at Web 3, Web 3 consists of, of mostly technologists at this point. There's not a lot of everyday users in Web 3 or enthusiasts in Web 3. And because of this, Web 3 uh, typically prioritizes decentralization, privacy, and tokenization. Um, and so the first step is if we want to achieve mass adoption, we need to first prioritize user experience and build that into the foundation. From that foundation, we can then use, uh, we can then look at tokenization, privacy, and decentralization. Um, and so what's currently used for NFT social platforms? Um, so when we look at the NFT life cycle, uh, we have the purchasing and the social aspect. So on that, the purchasing aspect, we have a slew of decentralized, proto uh, decentralized marketplaces uh, where users purchase and share NFTs. Um, on the social side, we have Twitter, which is where people can find new NFT communities to connect to and keep up with the broader NFT ecosystem. Uh, and then we have Discord and Telegram, which is where people will connect with the current NFT communities that they're invested in. Um, and so the gap here is that through the NFT lifecycle, there is a slew of decentralized, un unintegrated platforms that we have to use to purchase NFTs, to share NFTs, and to keep up with new communities and find new communities um, out in the NFT ecosystem. And so that's what we are developing, uh, my co-founder and I, Grant, which is Ovation Network. And Ovation Network takes in intelligent profiles, intelligent Web3 profiles, personalized portfolios built on a blockchain-enabled UI that makes it easier for NFT artists, projects, and enthusiasts to directly share NFTs um, on the timeline, show off their, uh, their collection and their notoriety and prowess within the communities that they're involved in. And so let's look at how can we find a good idea? Um, what is the inception of finding a good idea that's worth um, using these platform growth strategies against? Um, so this is essentially the process flow. We first have to own a market, deeply understand the market, and understand the market audience. From there, after understanding the market audience, we have to understand pain points and gaps that exist within that market audience. Uh, from there, we provide a solution to those pain points and gaps. After uh, providing a solution to those pain points and gaps, we then do a market audience survey uh, to ensure that the solution that we are providing and presenting uh, is in fact what our market audience is looking for. And so this is the stage of validating our solution. Um, and in this stage, it's very important that our clientele takes action. Uh, we really want, if let's say we do 50 or 100 or 300 calls with our market audience to ensure that, that our solution is in fact what they're looking for, we want them to take action off of those conversations. We want them to sign up for whitelist spots. We want them to, to buy NFTs that are currently listed. Um, the key here is we want clientele to take action. Um, and if they take action, this validates our solution. If they don't take action and they say, oh, that platform's great, I'll definitely use it when it's released, you know, when is it released, but they don't take action, um, then we need to go back to the drawing board and iterate and test and pivot what solution that we are providing to that market audience. So after the inception uh, of an idea, we now go into the bootstrap phase, and then we'll get further into the platform growth strategies uh, through escape velocity, which is acquisition effect, engagement effect, and economic effect. 
And so the bootstrap phase is the phase where you uh, acquire your first user base. And so um, bringing this back to Web2, in 1958, Bank of America was actually the first company to release credit cards. And they did this by releasing credit cards in a city where they already had 43% of the market. And this was, at the time, Fresno, California. What they did was bootstrap creator and producer uh, markets as well as uh, uh, consumers within those markets. So they picked a, a, a city where they already had uh, established um, customers and they brought on merchants, uh, credit card merchants, 300 merchants, um, and then sent 60,000 credit cards out to customers in Fresno, California uh, with an already, um, um, with a few hundred dollars on those credit cards that those customers could then use um, at those various merchants. And so they picked a, a very specific market and they targeted a consumer uh, and, and um, customer uh, market to, to test and iterate this new platform, which was at the time credit cards. So how can we bring this to Web3 and what is Ovation um, doing in this regard? So Ovation and our strategy for bootstrapping our first users to the platform is targeting NFT artists and projects. NFT artists are creators and coming with them is, uh, is already an established audience. And so through that bootstrap phase, um, it's very key that you bring on markets that are creator and consumer based. After you, you bring on markets that are very targeted, creator, consumer based, we now move into the escape velocity. This is where the platform starts to see uh, more massive growth. And so the first stage of this is the, is the acquisition effect. And so again, relating this back to Web2, we can look at what PayPal did uh, during the acquisition effect. During the acquisition effect, PayPal had an invite uh, incentivization program. And so, uh, so what, they, what they did and what they proposed to their community is um, as you invite a user and as that user joins, you each receive $10. At the same time as PayPal was going through this acquisition effect, uh, eBay was very popular. And so what they did through eBay and, and paying at this time was a lot harder. And so what, what they did through eBay is they created a one-click uh, payment badge through different uh, eBay uh, listings and so um, this was basically free advertisement back to PayPal, being that uh, eBay was already very popular. And so how can we bring this back to Web3? And what are we doing in, uh, in, in regards to Ovation? So on Ovation, as you create your intelligent profile and your personalized portfolio, you can relate this or you can share this to Twitter, um, which is where most NFT enthusiasts, products, and artists communicate today. Uh, what we'll also do is a invite incentive program on Ovation using our OVA and platform token, very similar to PayPal, except it, will be, uh, it won't be fiat, it'll be our, our in-platform token. So now after going through the bootstrap phase and getting our, our first user base there, now moving through the acquisition effect, we're starting to snowball. Moving into the engagement effect, those new users that we brought on the platform, we want to ensure that they're engaged. And so, when we look at the engagement effect, we really want to look at the engagement loops. How many clicks does it take for someone to create on the platform? So in the case of NFTs, does it take them 15 clicks to create an NFT? Or is it a single click process to create an NFT? And similarly, on the consumer side, how many steps does it take to the, for the consumer to get through the UI to consume the content or product that they want to? Is it, is it three clicks for the consumer to get to the NFT marketplace and find the NFT that they're looking for? Or is it 15 clicks? So in the engagement effect phase, you want to close the engagement loops uh, as much as possible to provide the best user experience. Uh, and similarly, we can look at dopamine loops. Um, and so dopamine loops are different feature sets uh, that keep users engaged on the platform. And so, um, how we plan to implement that innovation is through badges and gamification. So as users share uh, NFTs and as their portfolio grows, they earn badges and that badges uh, keep them engaged on the platform. And then through the economic effect, as you go through the acquisition and engagement effect, um, the platform is starting to earn revenue. People are more likely to purchase in-platform uh, premium features. Uh, then you roll those funds back into the acquisition engagement effect, um, continue to test and iterate, grow, and then you reach out the, the topping out phase, which is where your platform begins to plateau with the current features. And so you have to continue to build out features uh, in order to grow that market um, and grow into other market niches. Uh, and then the trench. So as, 
as our platform has grown and now reached mass adoption uh, in our market niche, we want to ensure that we build a trench around our market. Um, and so how we, how we do that is ultimately through user experience. They're going back through this escape velocity phase, ensuring there's good support for the creators and the consumers, uh, and ensuring that um, users are happy and have a have a good user experience. So, um, so that's it. Thank you guys uh, for listening. If you want to learn more information about Ovation, go to Ovation underscore Network uh, on Twitter. Thank you.